Hello everyone. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about our friend CPAP. All right. On the table, we have a variety of methods to deliver oxygen, but this video will be focused on CPAP. What is CPAP? CPAP is short for continuous positive airway pressure. Remember that when we inhale, we are utilizing negative pressure. So our diaphragm contracts downward, causing uh, negative pressure to develop and pu it pulls our lungs out. But we, if we were to mechanically ventilate someone and we squeeze the bag, we're inducing positive airway pressure. So CPAP is just a continuous form of that. So let's talk about the three different indications to using CPAP. First one is going to be pulmonary edema. So pulmonary edema is the medical term for fluid in the lungs. If we were to assess lung sounds and we heard rails or crackles, um, sounds like more milk, milk, milk being poured on Rice Krispies, um, that crackling sound. If we heard that, I want to utilize CPAP to force that fluid out of the alveoli back into the pulmonary circuit. Okay, so that's number one, it's pulmonary edema. Indication number two is going to be severe respiratory distress. So initially, when you see someone in respiratory distress, we're gonna utilize the non-breather mask at 15 liters per minute of oxygen, right? But if this isn't cutting it, if this isn't doing enough for that, we can escalate to CPAP, right? And uh, in, in CPAP, you know, especially people with COPD, which is the umbrella term for um, things like bronchitis and emphysema, patients that have a history of emphysema, they, their alveoli is structurally damaged, structurally compromised, and when they exhale, their alveoli collapse, making it very difficult for oxygen and carbon dioxide to exchange. What CPAP can do is force that positive air pressure within that alveoli and maintain that structural integrity um, throughout the inhale-exhale. Um, if you remember, in our, in our assessment sheets, we're asking you guys to see if the patient is pursing their lips, just like that, when they exhale. So when we purse our lips, we're causing what we call PEEP uh, in, within us to maintain uh, the structural integrity of our alveoli. So PEEP is short for positive end expiratory pressure. So it's the amount of pressure you experience when you exhale. Okay. And CPAP can assist us with that. Right? So that patient, if they're pursing their lips especially, could probably benefit from, from CPAP. So that's the second indication, severe respiratory distress. Let's talk about the third indication. So the third indication is um, if we heard wheezes bilaterally, we would initially jump to the nebu neb kit, nebulizer kit um, with 2.5 milligrams of albuterol and 0.5 milligrams of atrovent. And if we do that one more time with just 2.5 milligrams of albuterol for the second round, and we reassess, let's reassess five minutes later, and lung sounds are still wheezes bilaterally, we can, s we can utilize the CPAP device um, and what's cool about CPAP is on the bottom of our PEEP valve is a one-way like, blue uh, vent, and we can shove the NEV kit chamber up, um, and make, make sure it's, it's vertical, um, and then after that, uh, we, have, we need two sources of oxygen. So one, one tube is going to go to one oxygen tank, uh, and that's going to be at 10 liters per minute, shown uh, right here, yeah. And then uh, the second tubing from the NEV kit will be applied to another oxygen tank going at six liters per minute. Remember, the NEV kit is always at six liters per minute. Now, if it's your patient's first time with CPAP, as soon as you apply it to 10 liters per minute on the regulator, it's very loud. And there's a lot of pressure coming at the patient. So um, to you know, slowly you know, adjust to the amount of air being forced in their face, you know, let's just let's just hear how loud it is. It's it's very loud, and if I were to put my hand on it, it's a lot of pressure actually. So, what I would do is I would turn it on, and then I would give it to my patient. I would coach them: just hold it to your face until you start to feel comfortable. And if you look at this this part down here, we can adjust um, we can adjust the this green lever down here. So the numbers are kind of wiped off right now, but it's five, seven and a half, and 10, okay? And we start at five, and these, all, all these numbers correlate or correspond to the level of PEEP, and positive end expiratory pressure that the patient's experiencing. And we just adjust this and raise the number of PEEP, the level of PEEP, until the patient starts to feel comfortable. So right now, we allow the patient to hold it to their face, okay? And by them holding it to their face, they have some level of control 
and they can pull away from their face if it's too much or you know continue holding it if they start to feel comfort um, and less shortness of breath but after they've really pretty much gotten used to it we can start applying the black straps to the back of their head um, some of the things to remember when utilizing CPAP is that our patient needs to be alert and oriented times four if they're anything less than that then their tongue might be compromised and uh, it, there might be a risk of their tongue falling back and partially occluding their airway. So um, CPAP is very useful. We have to, you know, if someone is on the tail end of respiratory distress, we should aggressively manage that and that can save us and prevent us from utilizing positive airway pressure or ventilation with the BBM uh, and maybe escalating to an eye gel. Um, so we always opt for the least invasive option, which in this case would be CPAP. Hope that helps. Um, if you have any comments or questions, leave it in the section below. We'll see you in the next video. Okay, I think that was much better. Yeah. Easier to follow.